Hello guys, this is V and today we are going to talk about Go, Postgres and how to connect them. Wow, this is one of my favorite topics, you know, when it comes to building backends. So this is one of the ways you can actually build backend in 2018 and it is way, way more exciting. Okay. So uh, just before I start the tutorial and all uh, the kind of exercises, I just want you guys to let you know that this is not a beginner level course for Go or Postgres. This is sort of like an intermediate uh, uh, course uh, or a series uh, where I won't be talking about the beginning aspects of Go or Postgres, but I'm going to talk about how you guys can communicate using Go to Postgres. Means how you guys can build backend where you're writing all of your model logic in Go, but actually you are pushing data to Postgres. So, uh, so just mind that uh, if you don't have a uh, enough knowledge about go or postgres you guys can just uh, guys can just research it out you know see other uh, tutorial series and everything and if you think or if you want me to go through that you know just let me know and i'll build uh, videos for you uh, about go or postgres no worry at all okay so what is go now if you guys reach here right uh, just you know then it means that you are familiar with the go and all the advantages of the go so i actually don't want to tell you because you already know that but i just want to say that it's amazing it's modern and it's here to stay and it's it's, it's a long long uh, time based you know pr uh, prepared programming language uh, which is planned really good for the long term uh, uh, staying in the industry if you're learning go i think you're at the right place and in, in, on the right career choice you made and other thing is postgres okay what is postgres now it's a database right it's uh it's been here like almost forever i guess and uh well it's again one of the most used open source uh database uh when it comes to sql in the world it's competing with oracle and ms sql and all those kind of things but one of the important thing is postgres provides way way many features you know that any other database in the whole world postgres is a sql database but it has support for you know key value stores it has support for uh, json related things bison related things i mean it's amazing they have such text based searching in inbuilt inside so i think it should be really good but in this tutorial we are not going to go that advanced uh, we are just going to see how we can leverage uh, go and postgres to build simple uh, you know uh, models uh, and uh, based on that uh, backend so any language any programming language you use right you actually need some way to communicate with the database now you can actually not <coughs> write your wire uh, protocols you know by hand so for that you have libraries you know some people have come uh, you know contributed well fortunately in go there are a lot of libraries when it comes to postgres uh, go even has uh, official support for all the sql right uh, sql uh, databases uh, still there are a few uh, orms and everything which are really popular uh, so one of them is GoRM, which i haven't uh, i'm not going to talk about because it's generalized orm for uh, postgres mysql and ms sql and all other kind of databases right so they are actually opting out other features you know so that i actually don't like if you want to build orm right it should be perfect and it should be concentrated toward one thing and go page is one of the orm that i like to use on my day-to-day -day work uh, when i use go and postgres uh, because it's it, it is concentrated to our postgres you know it doesn't give a uh, damn about mysql or mssql why because well postgres is being used uh, way more than uh, those databases i mean mysql is again one of the popular choice of people you know when they're building uh, where, where they build database backends so uh, this is a uh, pg uh, which is sort of like orf for golang and postgres you know it provides uh, some added performance uh, so it's really good features well they have all the basic support for when it comes to the time seri i mean serializing packets or serializing uh, types from go to postgres so uh, you don't need to worry about anything else they also provide you know table to struct mapping so if you you can just write struct and it will get converted to table automatically so you don't need to like i don't know manage all those kind of things and uh, yeah they have other support for h store also they have a good support for transaction prepared statements 
they have a uh, support for notification which is kind of like unique because uh, let's see how it pans out actually uh, we'll see in the future you will love it uh, that's what i think and they have support for uh, timeouts and uh, connection pooling is also there and they have on conflict which is like new feature that came out in postgres for like 9.3 9.4 which is sort of like upset operation you know if insert fails you can actually write another query which will run when in the case of insert fails yeah so they have bulk uh, insert update deletes which is really good and they have support for migration and sharding which we'll also be looking into uh in the future so this is like a sort of like a driver uh, and uh this is how it works and uh i think we should get started then you know without i think wasting your time hello guys this is vijay and uh in this video we are going to talk about getting started with the project you know we'll do setup and everything before we do i just want you guys to install a little bit utility called glide glide is nothing but a package management for go if you are using go for a long time you may <coughs> you might uh, be knowing about that so uh go has uh, by default go get uh, stuff you know but it's not that much useful when you want to do a good level of project management so i use glide i already had installed if you didn't install it's very easy you just have to copy this and uh, paste it on your uh, terminal and it should be good good to go and then you can just do glide in it on your non glide uh, projects and it it will just scan it out and initialize everything and uh, so the configuration file is in glide.yaml i don't think you will have to maybe ever touch that file again uh, it'll, everything will be done command line so don't worry so it's that easy you know and if you whenever you want to install any dependency you just do glide get and the path that's it okay so let's get started so i have glide installed already as you can see i'm just going to clear it out and i'm going to create a new uh folder all pg tutes i'll go to pg tutes okay i'm just gonna do glide in it okay now as you can see we have a glide.yaml so just do glide.yaml just see nothing right because it tried to scan our uh, directory but couldn't find any you know go file to scan <coughs> so that's why it did uh, not scan anything and it didn't put anything in the glide.yaml but just initialization okay now let's just uh go to here and just instead of go get we'll do glide uh, get with uh, this much okay so we need this as a dependency in our project i'll just clear it out okay i'll just do glide get this path and it's downloading now so what this thing will going to do a glide will going to do it's just going to do go get and it's going to actually store it in glide.yaml so whenever you for example two guys are working right and you actually do some change and push it another guy will pull it right and in, in that time if you did any dependency right it'll actually you know it can uh, download from there on top of that this is like vendor dependency okay so these are not like global dependency these are like project specific dependency so for example if you see the vendor folder right you will i uh, will see github.com and uh, then uh, go pg and see so this will locally uh uh, install your dependency so uh, it won't affect for example if you're using one version of go pg in here and if you want to update in some other project right then you can actually do that so that's why it manages separate separate local versions of your dependency of your libraries <coughs> okay so uh, this was uh, so we actually got uh, let's just do vim glide and check it out oh sorry vim glide dot uh, yaml now as you can see it's importing you know uh, this and version is this so it's very easy close it so this is it we uh, actually uh, downloaded our go pg dependency and let's now uh, start the server okay so i have a postgres locally installed okay and uh, other thing is this is pg admin you know for the simplicity i'm using pg admin and as you can see i already have connected uh, to pg admin okay so i have a two database right now postgres and tutes so i'm just going to okay so this is like tutes uh, 
already uh, created a new database okay so we are going to try to connect with the dudes so before we go that i just want to say just uh, you know finish the with the done with, sorry i just want to be done with the project setup uh, so i'm just going to open that folder now uh, go to learning and then yeah i do so many learnings yeah so this is our project we opened it Okay, welcome. So I'm using a VS Code uh, because it's well, it's really good, I guess. One of the thing is it's really good, and you see, it's uh, they have inbuilt terminal and all those kind of things. So I like those. Uh, okay, so I'm in here, and uh, here is our glide.yaml. You know, I'll just make the font little bit smaller. So yeah, that's it. I think it's. I'm pretty sure you guys can see this. Okay. Now uh, we have a vendor. <coughs> and as you know, we need to create a main.go file. Okay. This is our, gonna be our main file. Okay. I'm, I'm using Vim bindings. Okay. In the uh, VS code. So it's gonna be like something like that. Package. Okay. And I'm just doing, you know, hello world, little bit hello world thing. Okay, dog print a line print if I like to Sorry. Oh, it's funk. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Sorry for that. That was like some weird mistake. Going to install some dependency, I guess. <clears throat> it's a VS related. Don't worry about that. Don't focus on that. And uh, just close this. Yeah. So this is our hello world. Let's just uh, compile it and check it out how it works. I'll just go here. I'll open the terminal. Let's go to terminal and it's here. I'm just gonna do go build. It built successfully. Now we have a pgtude binary. I'm just going to run pgtudes. Hello world. Well, as you can see, so this was our project setup. Okay. So uh, after that, uh, from next tutorial, what we are going to do is we are going to create a separate package just for the database related things, and we are going to start putting stuff inside that database. Uh, thank you very much guys uh, i'll see you next tutorial hello guys so in this tutorial we are going to talk about how to connect with the database using a driver called gopg okay pretty simple so the last tutorial what we did we created a structure we created you know just a framework we uh uh you know created this whole glide related uh, uh you can say project so glide is a package manager which will we are going to use to you know install dependencies and keep track of which version of the dependency we are using and everything you know glide will take care of it so if you see here right see you can say package and version right <coughs> so we are just using go pg nothing else we are using so it just shows that okay so let's get started so what we are going to do now we are going to create a new package called db why that well because we want everything else that we are doing you know into one uh, package so all the database related functionality right you will be putting in one package it's that simple you know you don't need to worry about anything else just so what why like this well if you are software developer you will know that you know <laughs> packaging your uh, separating your code modules you know into packages is good if your multiple developers are working right you can work on your db uh, part and you know other guy can work on the api part and you will never be, be colliding your code or anything like that so it'll be separated yeah that's it there is no actual reason you know you can actually write it down the whole db related things in the main.go and it will work just fine but the code won't be maintainable so i would not suggest you to do that 
yeah so okay let's uh, create a package we created a package we'll just call it uh, we'll create a new file inside that db package we'll call it main.go now you can call whatever you want if you are if you are doing a go then you might know package db let's import our uh, driver for github.com slash go pg that's it we can alias it using here like this now we are going to create a function called connect which is going to connect to database and we are going to test it out it's that easy nothing fancy or anything now i have a local version running okay so let's just connect it password okay as you can see i was able to connect uh, to uh, the local and if you see list of tables and you know list of table spaces so this is a tool called pgcl i'm using for mac os because i couldn't find psql for mac os i'm sorry guys this is pretty familiar uh, if, if you are familiar with psql this should work fine for you and this is uh, i think a little bit i like it because uh, you know uh, it gives a really nice auto complete you know so you can just check it out these are like your table spaces and uh, just by doing d plus you'll be like okay give me the database but i don't have any database so okay we got it <coughs> okay go back to the code and now what we are going to do is we are going to try to connect to that database okay for x sorry for, for before that we need to create a database so what we are going to do is we are going to uh, write query called create database mm. okay we already have one database called postgres but uh no sorry we already have a database called dudes so we are going to like describe okay I did not connect through Postgres. Yes, I did connect through Postgres. Mm, okay, I think we have a uh, database called uh, Tutes. So we are going to try to connect to the database. Okay, uh, let's get started then. I'm kind of new <laughs> with that PGCLI tool, so forgive me if you know uh, I seem a little bit confused. Don't worry about that. Let's just try and you know just connect through the Go, right? The, which is our main purpose. You know, instead of going through all that. Oh shit tools and stuff yeah one of the thing about go if you are not using the uh, dependency that you are you imported it's it'll go away so be careful with that okay now i'm just going to create db is equal to uh, pg dot so there are method called pg dot connect okay so this is it is that easy as you can see all you have to do is pg dot connect it'll give of course you'll be like hey where where do i need to you know give host and user and port and everything okay so for that we have something called options so we'll create options pointer to option is gonna be like db dot options options okay and inside that they have a user which will be in here vj that's me and uh, then then i'm gonna have a password is going to put vj vj because it's a local and you guys cannot do anything about it <laughs> another one is address and our address is a column separated uh, column separated uh, you know a url and port so localhost 5432 sounds good so these are like three fields which are mandatory it should be okay yeah okay so it's showing their undefined db oh sorry should be pg nice now what we are i'm going to do i'm going to pass on this oops in here perfect <coughs> db declared and not used now what will happen if it'll connect it'll give us a pointer so db is nothing it's a pointer okay so if you were to write something like this you can write something like where db of type pg dot sorry of type pointer pg dot db is equal to this so you can say this is the type that we are talking about 
okay db declared and not used of course so this is a pointer right so what will happen in the case of it will fail it will throw an empty pointer which is a nil pointer so if db is equal to nil means we'll just do log dot printf okay it's gonna be something like fail to connect to database that's it and you can just do after that os dot exit with reason i don't know some number 100 like hey i failed to connect okay else okay else we don't need to write because it's gonna crash anyway in case if it doesn't you know printf i'm gonna be like uh okay connection to database successful sounds good now you have a db object whatever you want to do you can do and after doing that what you have to do is <coughs> close it okay so once you are done with the db hole because if you are creating an api right then you, it'll take long time you know otherwise you can just close it out so how you will close so it'll be like close error is equal to db dot close this should close it check for the close error if his close error is not equal to nil hence log dot printf error while closing the connection can you print it out the error how you do the percentage v said reason so these are like good way to uh, write the logs okay so when it will print it will show you those error so you will figure it out what what went wrong and you can just do a dot exit you need to crash your program somehow after that or you can just say log dot printf connection closed play and just be done that's it as you can see this is our basic let's compile and check it out we'll go in here okay go build it compiled as you can see we have pg new binary let's run it out PGTUT. okay now what went wrong because we created the function but we never used it right so i'll just go to main.co okay this is gonna get tricky and i need to get that package so i'll be like uh db Oops. okay i'm gonna prefix with db and hello world after that i'll be like just calling call db dot let me check if that's the right if db dot yeah why because small c so it's a private function okay and see the error is gone let's see uh, oh sorry go build compile successful let it out boom as you can see hello world connection to database successful and connection closed successfully which means yes we were able to successfully connect to database and connection after using we actually close the connection now you will be like okay this seems really good but how do i do queries and how do i insert data and you know do all those kind of things right uh, which you need to do when you are building really highly scalable uh, server applications so don't worry guys you know in the next tutorial we are going to talk about but before that you know doing all the query and everything you need to understand the model how you will be able to you know convert the go types into uh, <coughs> sql types and all those uh sql related pg uh, types to go type right because serialization deserialization library already provides you know you don't need to do that 
so next tutorial we are going to uh, uh, you know uh, specific create some strokes and you know we'll actually uh, create a table according to those strokes and then we'll see how it works out and everything okay guys see you in next tutorial hello guys my name is vj as you know and in this tutorial we are going to talk about model definitions okay so now what is model definition so for example if you are using some sort of uh, language with some sort of database right so what you want is you want language specific data types to convert into postgres or some other database specific data types right and you don't want to do that you know so for that you have these libraries you know so and uh, one of the library that uh, we are using right now is gopg that we are discussing and let's see how gopg this i know converts all of your go uh, data types i'm sorry uh, to uh, postgres data types okay so when it comes to database right so database is like the root inside that you have tables uh, uh, you know uh, concept of tables so those tables are equal to uh, structs in uh, go or go pg okay so uh, you can actually define all of your table as a struct and all of your field as a column of the table it's that easy okay so this is a simple uh, you know concept of a product uh, table that I just created you know in five minutes so this is just to show you guys you know how it uh, feels like so this is a, a, you know, a model of product that we are going to create okay so let's create a wasting lot of time say product dot go okay, in the DB yes. how gonna be DB now to create a uh, struct uh, uh, product. Type product. I was just checking if the autocomplete is working. Okay. So now this is is equal to <coughs> okay. So now when you are going to use uh pg right i'm just going to write down some comment how it's going to behave so when you will actually run this uh, go pg migration or go pg create table right that we'll be seeing in just uh, maybe next tutorial what it's going to do it's going to create a table name products okay so now the na name of the table is going to be products why because one thing it'll do it'll actually do uh you know all the camel uh see this kind of capitalized cases right it's going trying to make it in camel cases separated by underscores uh, so if you if you write something like product item right so it's going to create a table called product items product items so, so what is happening is it's separating by underscore all the capitalized uh, uh words that you're writing and it's pluralizing it why because this truck represent one item right but table will have collection of items you know so it's tight it tries to do that so whenever uh, you create table just keep in mind that but of course if you don't want that and you want to manually write your name of the table so there is a uh, field called table name okay this is a private field so remember all the exported fields or public fields you know who's uh, where uh, uh, the name of the field start with the capital uh, letter are gonna be actually working all the private fields like this they are just gonna get ignored so you don't need to worry about that struct we can just uh, product item like Okay. now what is happening is uh, whenever uh, you know go pg will try to uh, uh, create the table it will look for this field if it, if it contains this then now our table name is go not gonna be like this this is like the default way of doing but we are overriding with uh, product items collection okay okay now let's create something called id integer okay so this is whenever you are typing id or id so it's going to track it it's uh, trying to make a primary key out of it 
so this is going to be our id and let me just check other fields uh name unique uh, you can also like you know change your uh column uh, details also using uh sql tag sql you want to change the name of the id it's going to be like id okay and you can also give this is primary key manually it's gonna get converted to primary key but you can give manually like this you can give primary key okay and the thing is this is a good practice in a way so i'm actually trying to make this thing unique so you can see works right so this is how you give the constraints and everything you just try to remember that you need to use sql at column level okay and it is good practice to just give your name here just to make sure okay what the details we have in description in price description Path. Now, one another thing I would like to. What if you want to change the type? So you can just change the type by you know real because. If you do float 64 by default it will try to do numeric or something like that but i want real you know small uh number small floating by number something like that so this is how you can change your postgres type okay. So this is our whole data med, uh, model got just created. <clears throat> so whenever we'll run the command <coughs> called create table, right? It'll actually get all the properties and all the details and it'll try to uh, create a table out of it. Okay, so I think nothing is. What was this? Yeah, see, we just created a table. Okay, and I'm just going to close this. And it is a good practice, you know, all the models you create in a separate uh, Go file. So as you can see, it's going to be like. Export a type. And, um, so I don't know. <laughs> okay. So as you can see, this is uh, uh, almost done. Uh, so this is how the modeling works okay now you might want to know uh, what type you are supporting right also here's the thing hmm. so these are all the types that we are uh, supporting uh, when it comes to go pg okay so these are the go types and these are the postgres types so if you see integer rate you add it's going to be small int 16 32 integer and this and that float 32 is going to be real Float 64 is going to be double precision that we actually talked about. Bool is going to be boolean. Sync is going to be text. Byte is going to be byte array. If you are actually embedding another struct or map or array, it's going to be JSON B. Remember, this is really good. You want to try? Okay. Uh, we can actually try it out on features. Actually, we can just embed uh, another. Uh, okay. We can just give feature name. Hmm. Name is gonna be 
feature a uh, feature uh, description is gonna be and i don't know importance you know how important the feature is going to be it's sort of like rating or private uh, uh priority i'm just gonna make it integer just to you know okay, no, I know. so this should get converted to json b or you can what you can do is you give type and b i mean right how hard it is as you can see it's really easy see? okay so this is how you do even if you create a map right map will also convert into the if you create array it's gonna be just and be nice time to time that we are doing is gonna be timestamp with time zone and ip addresses we don't have so i think that's it okay what if you want to ignore some field okay for example i don't know you you want to use it for example uh for the struct purpose but you don't want it in the table so um, i don't know uh, let me just get a name okay something like uh, ref pointer okay just a uh, ref pointer is just a reference number you know nothing else to do with the database so what we can do is we can actually give like sql underscore so, sorry not underscore gonna be sql yes so what this is going to do is this is going to ignore this field okay so Whenever the conversion is a conversion is happening from go PG to uh, PG or go to PG, you know, uh, other side this will get ignored, you know. So you can use it as a struct, normal struct data type in the uh, whenever you're using the go. But when you're using it for uh, for the reference of the database, this this won't even create a uh, column in the database, so it won't be present. So this is how you can ignore uh, the field that you ignore. So I think this was it, you know, when it comes to modeling. So this is like the very basic modeling. If you actually want to get into the detail, right, you can actually go to the GoPG model definition, Wikipedia, you know, and you can check it out, all the details. I think this is uh, all they have, I guess. I mean, this is all it requires, you know, all the all the other things going to be in the database specific that you will have to write it in the database, you know, so. So, okay, uh, so the next tutorial, guys, we are going to see how to create a table uh, using uh, GoPG, you know, directly without writing any queries like create table this and these columns and everything else. Okay, uh, see you then. Hello, guys. So, well, in last video, we have seen that, okay, how to create model definitions and everything. Let's create a table out of this model definitions now, right? Okay. So I'm just going to uh, write a function to create a table out of it. So I'm just going to be like function uh, create broad items table. Okay, this is like my function, so don't worry. I treat an error, nothing else. Okay. Now. Uh, it's very easy to write a create table okay you need a little bit of options so all the create rela table related options are stored i'll just copy from protocol okay orm is another sub module in pg uh, which contains some options so we, first of all we will create options required to create a table they are not required but i think one of the options specifically you should write just put to be on the safe side or m dot uh, create table options one is if not exist true so this option will tell uh go pg that only create table if it's not if it doesn't exist you know just don't create it if it's already there right so what happens is this suppresses one kind of error so for example if you are running your script right and it's all automated and you know you just you don't check before creating and everything so it'll throw an error while creating the table so you, this is good if it's already that then it'll just ignore it it won't create it and it, it won't even throw an error okay now just create uh create error with uh, okay i also need a db i guess because reference db okay so db of type pg dot db pg imported 
paste pg how, how do you create so we will have a database reference it'll just be like db dot create table it's that easy give the model definition which is a uh, reference to empty product item object and options that we had okay got created okay now let's check if create error is to nil then just log it out print f uh, error while creating table order terms reason is get error and we will just do return we get error else dot printf table product get error Well, our function is ready check it I'll, okay so when we connect to the uh, connect to the db right here will be just like error that i don't actually want to check i'll just create products table with the db reference that we had and that's all required before closing the connection okay let's compile it uh, For that because I already uh, get uh, that so I just need to delete it I guess mm. just check it out if it's already there delete it first okay so nothing is there now uh, compile program it's compiled okay table product items created successfully as you can see let's just go here and check it out yes we have product items collection let's if you want to see in detail you can just do the there you go so as you can see this gives all the structure right so see id is a big int it's a next value it's a serial right as we you know discussed uh, by default and uh, primary key id already took it right and name is a text description is text this see feature is a json b as you can see right and created this time zone with times boolean and everything and this is the unique date key that we created you know so this is how it works you know we just create a table out of coding without even writing a single query this is really good what the options right if for example if you'll run it again right it's just saying table product item created why because it's ignoring the fact but it's not actually creating again and again if you see right it's just the same table but if you'll remove this option okay this this option let's see how this pans out now it well error by creating table why because relation this already exists as you can see right now you don't want to check this again and again you know you just want to ignore it so why you just put this so healthy way of doing things i guess okay as you can see it's working so guys this was uh, this is how you create the table okay next tutorial we are going to talk about how to insert uh, some data in the table boom thank you guys hey guys <clears throat> let's talk about uh, inserting some data now okay ah, so you have an object you created an object you have this api that get called and you know you create this object 
and you want to insert some data into or you want to insert some product items in do that okay so let's just you know it's it's pretty easy actually so let's create a function uh, it'll just receive product item product items uh, receiver i'm just going to call this save it'll, it'll take db of pointer uh, pg dot argument it'll just return so inserting is pretty easy okay so let's just see works well uh it's gonna be like insert error db dot insert i mean it's that easy i'll just pass on reference of my item which is pi that's it and if i'll be like if set error is not equal to nil then error while being new item to db oh sorry to print some reason percentage percentage used for printing out the interfaces by the way might be thinking return error okay otherwise but hmm Item. This is we created the same function, it's going to insert it. Okay, now we need to call this function. So we're just gonna go to main. Okay, main will have db, so it's easy. Okay, should have gone to this. So I might make some change, some changes. So when we connect, right, we should give a reference to db. Uh, we should be like pointer to pg dot db. Return this db. Okay, so we're gonna remove a couple of things like uh, closing up the connection. We're gonna remove from here. Uh, put it for well, now. We won't even bother about that uh, closing anymore. I'm just going to get the connection, try to create the table if it's not exist. Require <coughs> okay. Now there's a written TB. So, this is our video. Okay, now write your code here because this is integrated now you go to main.co okay you create another uh, say product and take uh, pg <coughs> I'll ask for db pointer here because to well, I don't think we will need uh, we will need this yeah it's pointer okay. now what I'm doing here I'm just going to create a new product here, okay? How do you do that? It's simple. Uh, new product item is equal to db dot product Thank you.
I just create this item now. Huh? ID we don't need to give uh we'll give something like uh name is gonna be you know yes okay guys so let's create an object in here okay uh one second okay so i'm just going to give a name of the product one to copy all the name description product description this is a test data <coughs> oops this is the main path from five dollars I mean right no big deal this picture on description and I had something else I guess something to do with uh, importance okay. right okay it's a bummer Yeah, so that's why you might want to, you know, if you want to, uh, if you don't want to add like a non struct, create uh, some other subtype or something. These are the techniques that you might want to learn, you know. It's gonna be create. Then it is time dot now. Edit it time dot now. Sure, boy. That's it. We created a whole product. As you can see, let's save it now. So we already have DB options. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be like, uh, okay, we give this a DB DB ref because we already have one DB given. Okay. Now what we're going to do is, uh, oh. Okay, to db ref. That's a pgdb, and we have another. Uh, okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do product item dot. We created save function instead, if you if you remember. Mm, but for that, we need a pointer as you are. And it'll ask for uh, db ref. That's it, and it'll written to me. I'm just going to call this here product with pg db. And as you can see, I think it works. Let's compile and check it out. Well, it compiled. Wow, product. Product one inserted successfully. Let's see. I think this is select star from. What was the name of the table? I always forget. <laughs> uh, product. I'm just going to copy this from. 
well as you can see we have our first product <coughs> okay so name is product one description is product one description this is image path price is 4.5 as you can see feature is a json with values i added right i didn't do any encoding decoding it's all done by the pg go pg it's amazing created at time it took care of your updated took care and exactly took care this is how you insert okay now what if you actually want like uh, you want look to return that whole product you know whenever you insert right you want that whole product is written so that also we can do so i just go to here this is the insert save right so you can create some another function something like pi sometimes you know you might want to have that whole struct written to you you know updated or something like that so we'll be save and return okay so let's create a function called save and return it'll again for db it's gonna be pg dot instead of just return it'll return a tuple with pointer to uh product your product item and error in case okay so how do you do that it's very simple okay so first we need uh, we already have a product that we want to insert here but we need to create a new hmm. uh, okay so let's try it out Set error pi dot del sorry uh it's gonna be like db dot del pi dot returning okay and you give give me everything in return then insert okay so it'll give you result as well as errors so it'll be result result error <coughs> if insert error is then log dot printf error one Thing. Dumb. And I also might want to know what what you got. Uh, L. Because you need to return to right. Is log dot print here. item better fully i'll do another look i just want to know what is actually we got right so received new value result is percentage because we don't know the type so that will print it out and then we'll return pi and let's see i'm just reading pi just for the sake of it you know we'll here this is not the actual main and we'll just update the product name to two because that's a unique field okay everything just keep up everything else should be same doesn't matter but instead of save i'll be save done should give new product item sorry 
updated product item yeah thing like this it should give okay okay what if we just don't because we don't need it right so just remove it otherwise i might have to print it out here again the same thing will happen let's come back check it out oh uh, yes <clears throat> no error okay inserted successful new result is this <clears throat> okay so we have a reference and we have this so we need to actually get into the result and see what is actually written okay so we'll go here let's just see result dot we will get model rows affected and rows written right so rows affected is uh, uh when you do uh okay let's check it out uh so what was that in that mm, here insert result dot model us or a model dot i think it's gonna throw an error because of primary right yeah So see this is how you realize you know that the thing is get got inserted or something like that hmm okay it's a freaking pointer but you got the idea right so you can actually get uh, okay let's see uh, other thing hmm the rows affected yeah because error yeah this gets yes so that might also be into just all the things that they're providing right they're pointers you know so you might have to convert and you know do uh, decasting and stuff like that but you got the idea right this is how insert works and okay, the other things as other kind of insert is bulk insert okay that i thought i should talk about it bulk insert is uh, it's like you know inserting multiple items okay product item okay. save multiple i'll ask for like you know um items dot 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 if you know go then this is called okay product items references of product item error okay see how multiple works very easy all you have to do is you know wait set error db oh we need db also sorry like d gonna be like pointer to p or d and this should be pointer not reference okay <clears throat> how are you gonna do that okay what is going on here hmm with the final parameter okay let's see. not just use something like this in here we'll put it here because it's periodic function parameters so, yeah it won't be able to find it out then okay looks good now i'm going to do db dot uh, model so model is actually when you want to insert so i'll be like items okay insert that's it Hmm. Well, I think I'll yeah. I'll give you some results. Did I told you right number of rows affected and stuff like that. So we actually don't need that thing. Let's see. I score it. If that error is not equal to nil, print f. Error while inserting bulk item. Reason being, see what is the reason? <clears throat> uh, error. That error. Oh. 
Schön. Ball. Well, as you can see, we did bulking. Ah, oh, what we're gonna do? Let's call create a couple of these items. The same function. I don't wanna, you know, so much called. I'm just going to write two product. It's gonna be product number five. Function name that we give it save. Well, first was the uh, reference, another was terms very adding. Okay, and change to UPR. Got it. PR. Hmm. We have DB do DB ref. We have ref. Yeah. Multiple. Okay. 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 Um. Oh, new PI one is function written the way it's written is a little bit wrong, but that's okay. Not uh, error while inserting bold items reasons model not pointer. Okay, I need to give pointers, and I'm giving the pointers. Hmm. Okay, let's see what is going on. Pointer. As a pointers, I can do <coughs> instead of this and just you know, very addict, right? And so much for very addict functions. Uh, then I'll have to create a uh, total term to array but, uh, uh, the dot product. Hmm. What do you think? Good to me. Total. What is going on in here? Okay. been something like this yes got it sorry for my misunderstanding with that thing I think they're asking to give non pointers okay Let's see you go here okay I think I got it man you need to give something like you cannot just give array you need to give something like uh, zero items this is how it's supposed to be yes see this is supposed to be you need to give erratic functions you cannot give array and i give array my bad let's just check it out if everything is there Select our side. Hello guys. Hmm. So let's talk about uh, uh, parameter placeholders. Okay. So 
you have written any kind of uh, queries before right you might know that you know when you write the query you actually instead of embedding the value you actually embed a placeholder like questions or dollar or something like that and they just give the uh, query after that uh, write that value after that you know so that uh, mostly in other drivers it um, you know helps again SQL injections and those kind of things it also does in P go pg uh, so let's get started okay so I'm just going to just give you a simple demo if you don't know already what it is so I'm just going to create a small function go you know the solder demo okay we'll wait for Expect uh, okay. Now, what we are going to do, we will have uh, some value that we would like to uh, get scanned. Okay, so wh what essentially is happening, we'll do some query, and whatever that query will return, right? We'll actually put it inside this. Uh, okay, so let's just run the query db dot query. Okay let's see the signature of this so this query is actually a function that takes model okay and a particular query and uh, whatever uh, input parameters that you're giving and it will give you result and error result we don't care because it will give you number of affected and this error yes uh, select error okay db dot query first one is the model model means what model means the data that you actually are expecting to put so db dot scan okay. sorry not db pg dot will actually in, uh, so this is where you actually going to get uh, your values so for example if you are your query is written in five columns right so actually you want to scan all of the five columns in here so this is where it uh, comes into the play so that is first second one is query uh, so I'll just say query and third one is params. Okay, param is I'll just put like some sort of value 42 for example. A query I'll have to write query type string is equal to sorry select question mark. Now as you can see, oops sorry. As you can see, I've added question mark. So the question mark here is a placeholder, right? The placeholder is something that you put uh, inside the query, okay? And whenever you are actually running in some function, right, you expect that is to be replaced by some particular value. So in this case, what will happen is this query is actually this query, right? I'm just, you know, I just I added it as a, a variable. Now, whenever this query will compile, right? So the GoPG will expect this. Uh, sorry, GoPG will actually try to put this 42 in place of question. Okay. So what the query says is return whatever value that you are giving as an input. Okay. So let's just see. Okay. First of all, if select error is not to nil, need to do error management. Error while the very I don't know you tell me by printing okay and then I'll just return actor or I think everything's done uh, you should just say scan this full all scan full scan value it's integer so I can write percentage D and then value right the query is successful then we should get 42 as a result and that's it works I need to call this function uh, like let's oops sorry db dot demo function name it
there you go scan successful scan value is 42 so you understood right how queries works in here but this is not specific to query okay this is just to know that uh, what placeholders are now instead of this for example you can actually give a uh, positional placeholders okay you can just give zero no, so it will actually expect a zeroth for example if you're giving here like 42 32 32 something like that Oops. oh what happened beam crashed i guess somehow oh that that doesn't happen <laughs> damn okay in the setting so now we have two values right? what are you supposed to do i'll, I'll just add zero let's see if it works or not okay 42 and what if i'll just replace with one damn 41 see as you can see so these are called a positional parameters okay now what happens is see uh when we uh see currently uh, the thing is it's very small right input and output that's why you'll be able to do that but trust me i've written the queries where you know i was giving like 20 input uh, as a placeholders and what happens is i used to give like on uh, you know the order so now after that you know if you want to remove something right then you have to push everything one step ahead and you know that it gets kind of messy so instead of that what you can do is actually like you know put on this positional parameter so even if you like whatever that you, you know value that you need to change or something right uh, it doesn't affect it why because it don't depend on the order it depends on the position you can actually give the position you know it's that easy okay one more better thing the third thing that i would like to talk about is named parameters okay so it's better than even positional parameters it's called name it's okay i'll just create a Rocked, okay uh, type uh, params rocked, uh, param one bring param two bring okay sounds good mm, interesting now what i'm doing is instead of this i'll be like param one you see how it's happening right so this is like name parameters but i need to create object of that param so i'll be like params because i need to supply that right so it's gonna be like params uh, param one is gonna be like uh this is two is like this is param two but when we return we should be expecting so now value will be string okay now i'm written in this instead of all these things i'll be just say params see this is pretty easy right so it should written what this is param one yes let's see Hmm. as you can see is can successful scan values this is param one well uh, i stake in here to live in percentage yes well scan successful scan value is this is param one okay now if you think that oh i don't like this we like param two boom boom oh where the crap that thing went sorry guys for the language mm -hmm. That's it. See, it is that easy, right? You are not actually literally doing anything. See, so these are like three ways you can uh, do placeholdering when you are using Go PG uh, library. You know, uh, this I, I find it really interesting. So one of the thing I find it so interesting is the name parameters. Uh, you all you have to do is just you know create some struct. For example, if you are writing some sort of big query, you just create a struct and put on all the conditions with key value, right? And remember one thing you must uh, uh, sorry uh, i'll just finish that thing off uh, you can just put that and you know you can just call it in here i mean it's that easy so one of the other thing is again it's see it's not it's not uh it's again uh, parsing with the cam you know parsing all the capitalized into the camel case you know the separated band scores and everything so you have to be like uh, that you need to understand that uh, thing also so this was all about parameter holders sorry <coughs> sorry placeholders guys uh, 
uh, why I actually had to push this because all the other queries right update or uh, you know uh, delete or select and all the other kind of queries uh, this is must required because you will have all the where conditions and everything right and all the conditions mainly we use name parameters so you have some better idea what name parameters are right so I just thought I should just you know give a tutorial on this before I move ahead with all the delete and ins uh, sorry delete and update and other kind of queries so yeah this was it you know try to learn a little bit about it you know if you have any question you can just uh, shoot me a message you know I would be loved I would love to or more than happy to you know reply you regarding this uh, thank you very much guys hey guys well in this video we are going to talk about how to delete it's gonna be a pretty tiny video because there are just a <clears throat> couple of ways you can delete stuff you know so no big deal uh, okay so I'm just going to okay now we have a product item and everything but you might be thinking that huh, I don't want this product item anymore or you think that oh this is I think put you know by mistake or something like that you want to delete it right it's pretty easy create a function product item and uh, just to just create this you know delete item method I'll expect uh, pointer to dot e error occurs now delete is again pretty easy okay what do you do you do db dot again first of all you select the model a model is what it will actually put uh, your uh, whatever uh, table uh, item is right row into the it load as a serialization thing and then you can do whatever you do so what we are going to do uh, so if you for example if you want simple delete right delete by primary key which is like id you can just do db dot uh, delete and you know you can just give uh, pi but in this case you might need this id because what this does it will create a query called you know delete from table name where id is equal to this okay but mostly i don't think that will be the case if that will be the case that you are deleting by id then you can just do db or delete and be done with it but in yeah of course whenever you in this pi object you need to have your id set okay yes but mostly that won't happen mostly you will be deleting based on some sort of condition right so how do you do that so simple uh, db dot first of all you load the model which is uh, pi dot you add the condition where uh, uh, let's say name is equal to placeholder name okay and what should be the name uh, come on give me that give me that give me that okay now that will look at from here only right so we don't need to even give and then delete that's it so i told you right last video tutorial uh it's gonna be placeholders you know name so what happening what is happening in here is when you do db dot model right so now this model pi is in context okay so whatever name placeholders are referring here right there we are that we are referring from this pi uh parameter object you know so that's why we don't need to separately here give any structure because internally it'll, it'll take data from here and then we just have to run delete query okay mm -hmm. I'll, it'll again re a written result and error so it's a result we don't care if there is some delete error then we can just check it out okay delete error is not equal to nil then i'll be just like log dot printf what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna be like error while deleting dumb reason could be percentage with error to return delete error printer this full person pi dot got it okay let's delete it i'll go to main i uh, will remove this place i will demo yeah. create a function delete item 
speed punk delete uh, item back db ref as pointer So we need to create object remember because we are running we are doing everything <coughs> over that particular object so the new pi is equal to uh, p dot product item i just need to give name because we are referring just name only so name i'm gonna give what uh, let's delete product five set this is what matters and I'm just going to run that thing with db dot no 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 sorry you can run on new pi because we already have item oops sorry I think it should be just delete with db ref okay Okay, DB product. You know, okay, let's let me just go to here and just say delete item. Yeah, so that was the name. Looks good. Out build. Delete successful for product five. Now just take star from product items collection. sort of complete so if you see right product one product two product three product four and product six so product five is gone so this is how daily it works you know I mean there is no big deal about it you know you can just write it down easily and it should work ba -ba -ba. another thing is just an experimentation yeah uh, so you got it right it's very easy you just give the condition and you know after that you just delete you load your model in here so this should work fine so but usually if you see right people don't delete that much you know they'll just set some flag is active to false or something like that i mean i don't know they might want the data but yeah remember this still it will literally wipe out your data okay whatever data you're deleting it'll just it, they're gone forever so whenever you are using the delete just be careful Test it out on your staging or development environment before you actually put it in production. Otherwise, you might mess up a lot of things that you might not get recovered unless you have backup or something. So this was a delete, guys. Maybe uh, next tutorial, let's just see how to do updates and stuff. Hey guys, <coughs> look who's back. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, and uh, let's talk about updates. You know. So last video I talked about uh, delete. So I'm just showing you some uh, some of the promising uh, you know uh, way of doing things. Okay, there are if you if you actually go to the documentation, right? There are like way different different ways of doing things.